Hello and welcome to this little mini video lecture on plasma mini preps from uh, theory and practice. Uh, this week in the lab we'll be doing our first mini prep. We've successfully transformed some bacteria, some E. coli, to be resistant uh, to ampicillin and canamycin using a recombinant DNA uh, molecule that we created and then transformed cells with. And now the next step in this process is to actually remove the plasmid so that we can digest it and confirm what we think is in there. Uh, in theory, it should be pretty straightforward. We have a cell that has the uh, plasmid that we've transformed into the cell, and all we have to do is take it out. In practice, it's a little bit more complicated than just reaching in there and grabbing it. We're going to use a uh, technology that's called spin column uh, technology, and some of the things we learned last uh, term as far as how proteins uh, stay in solution or don't stay in solution. Basically, we're going to lyse the cells or rupture them and then use uh, bind the DNA to a column that will be an affinity column. Wash it a few times to get rid of some of the junk and then elute the DNA right off of the column and have our pure plasma DNA. Uh, we use a kit from Zymo Research. Uh, it's called the Zippy Plasmid Mini Prep Kit. I'm going to show you this quick little video that they produced to, to walk that shows you the procedure. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, actual details of each of the steps. So first of all, a little video. Welcome to a brief overview of the Zippy Plasmid Mini Prep Kit from Zymo Research. The Zippy Kit features color-coded buffers for error-free visualization of the entire mini prep process, which is completed in just five easy steps. Step 1. Add 100 microliters of 7x lysis buffer to 600 microliters of bacterial culture. Mix thoroughly by inversion until the solution is blue throughout. After lysis is proceeded for at least two minutes, add 300 microliters of the yellow neutralization buffer to the lysis reaction. Following complete neutralization, spin down the debris in your tabletop centrifuge. After centrifugation, transfer the supernatant into the Zymo spin column. After passing through the supernatant, wash with 200 microliters of endowash buffer, followed by 400 microliters of zippy wash buffer. Finally, elute with at least 30 microliters of zippy elution buffer. Plasmid DNA purified with the Zippy kit is RNA-free, endotoxin-free, and suitable for a wide range of downstream applications. Now, imagine getting more from less. So as you can see, that process is not that difficult, and then we should end up with nice, clean plasmid DNA for our downstream analysis. Now let's take a look at each of the steps and make sure that we understand what's going on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add lysis buffer directly to our E. coli culture. Fortunately, uh, but this is a lysis that involves pretty straightforward stuff, some sodium hydroxide, uh, so it's an alkaline lysis, and SDS, which we've seen before you know, when we did SDS page, which will help to denature the proteins. Uh, it's nice, too, that it has a pH indicator that's blue in color, so that when we, we'll know that after we've inverted it four to six times, the solution turns nice, clear blue, indicating that we have complete lysis. Uh, the next thing we will do is to neutralize that solution and precipitate the uh, proteins and all the cellular debris. So we'll add the neutralization buffer, which will rapidly neutralize that sodium hydroxide. Conveniently, there's the uh, indicator that was in the lysis buffer changes to yellow when it is completely neutralized, which makes it real easy to know that we have done the neutralization completely. Uh, at this point, all the proteins and the genomic DNA will be uh, precipitated, leaving the plasmids in solution, uh, again, because of the rapid change in the pH and the SDS uh, that's in there, we will... Uh, really have all the major macromolecules will be precipitated. Next thing we'll do is we'll spin it down for a couple minutes and then at that point we should have a tube that looks something like we have shown here on the screen with after two minutes centrifugation we'll have the supernatant with our plasmids still present in there and then all of the cell debris and genomic DNA uh, precipitated at the bottom of the tube. At that point we'll take the supernatant and transfer it into the spin column. And the spin columns look like this uh, little diagram here. They fit nicely inside the 
one and a half milliliter centrifuge tubes that we use, and they have at the bottom of them uh, a silica-based affinity column, uh, similar to ones we've used before that will bind specifically to DNA, allow everything else to wash through, and then when we change the salt concentration later on in the protocol, we will wash the uh, DNA off or elute the DNA off. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to have to bind and wash it a few times. Uh, we're going to transfer that supernate into the column, spin it for 15 seconds, which will rinse all of the solution through, and bind the DNA. The binding uh, is due to the high salt concentration that we're using in the, in the solutions. And then we're going to wash the column once with what's known as an endo wash buffer, which is going to remove any endotoxin, which um, would get in the way of downstream applications for uh, transformation if we're going to transform with this plasmid. And make the and clean it up a little bit. So the endotoxin, which can be present in some bacterial strains, will get washed out with the endo wash. And then we're going to wash the column with a, a wash buffer that has ethanol um, and tris, which is just a buffer and still a high salt concentration. The ethanol will rinse out any of the remaining SDS that again could get in the way of restriction digest downstream or any of the other applications you might have with the plasmid later. So that will clean it up nice uh, and leave the plasmid still bound to the column. Then the last step really after the couple washes are simply to elute the plasmid. All we do then is we're going to add a uh, buffer that has, still has tris in it which will keep the DNA soluble but has a low salt concentration which will cause the plasmid to be unbound from the column and we will end up in our final tube, as we always call it the money tube, with our plasmid nice and clean and purified. So uh, that's a quick overview of the steps involved in the mini prep process and we will be carrying that out uh, for the first time this week in the lab and then several other times later in the term. Thanks.